So we're live. So huge thanks for joining myself. You can see Luke in the background. You can see me as well. Hey guys. Um, in, in fact, you've got Ronald Fletcher, Baker, solicitors. Uh, I've got the name right. You know, I keep yeah. saying Ronald Baker, Fletcher. I and, uh, so, <laughs> you know, I, I keep thinking of Baker Street and uh, where, where they're located. So I always put the Baker. You're uh, going to use uh, an acronym surely for that. <laughs> so R R RFB, I've got developed with us as well. Look, Tony, we, we were talking yesterday about the importance of due diligence. So uh, your yeah. background, you're, you're an investor for a long time, you're very savvy. Um, so in, in terms of, and Tony, you're, you're the co-host of the Property Summit, you know, I asked Luke Hamill, who's my co-host for the Central under me, who should co-host the one day event, and your, your name was top on the Professor. list. Uh, so in, in terms of the property summit and your background is, is investing and you, you've been doing that for quite a number of years as well, 17 years being a landlord. Yeah. Look, due diligence is important, whatever you do, um, and also having the skills, the savvy knowledge to know how to read deals. And it's completely changed the market as well with Section 24. You, you understand yeah. Section 24 much better than I do, to be fair, uh, a lot better than I do. Um, but that's really changed things. How's it impacted on you, Section 24? Has it really been a, a game changer? Has it really made a difference thinking, look, you need to look at other ways of potentially being involved in property rather than just a traditional buy to let landlord? That's absolutely in my opinion. If, if you're keeping stuff in your personal name, particularly if you become a high rate taxpayer. So, uh, thinking ahead of the game, we've, we've got a four year window which we're already in. So for me, as you said, Brendan, I'm, I'm a new traditional buy to let investor. Uh, fairly lazy, if I want the markets have treated me very well. Uh, I, uh, the landscape's changed, so I need to change with it. Uh, the development site is ideal, actually, because every, every person there is bringing some stage to help me move forward with my development journey. So we do uh, ref refurbish, you know, we'll get property smash it apart, and then we'll put it in that portfolio, and maybe set it further down the line. So very simple stuff, not what I call proper development. So, so going forward with the property development. What, 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 and what's your perspective on property development? Or, or people, development, I should say. A, a bit more than the extensions and refurbs that, that, that we've done. More uh, new builds, uh, to, you know, com commercial to resi, which is I'm involved with one at the moment. Where I'm just getting started now. But I know my due diligence inside out on, on my buy to lets. And uh, that really and gives you a, a help when you're looking at developer. Yeah, well, yeah. Even if it's on a crowdfunding platform, you know what you should be looking at? Not completely. So, so this is where the summit's going to come in really useful to me. There's a lot of clever people in the room, there's solicitors there, Luke Skelton's there, Tor's there. So, so these guys, I've met with them individually in that conversation. And every time I speak to them, I realise that, that there's so much to learn and develop, not to mm -hmm. go in blind. So, look, there's a, key, a few key things coming up. One is, I haven't really outlined all of the people involved in the summit, and I will go through that in just a moment or two, and, and it's quite a, a plethora of people, but it, it's about really, I would say the theme of it is about how to become an extraordinary developer. It's not how to become an ordinary developer, because if you want to become an ordinary developer, please don't go to this event, because you, know, you, you don't need to at the end of the day. Um, and it's so it's about going to the next level or the next levels. So, Tony, who, who are you really looking forward to hearing, or what particular topic we were discussing last night, structure and deals? You, you really think that's going to be one of the more valuable panels for you personally? Um, what, what, what do you think is so key about structure and deals? Well, interesting, I talked to my, my, my accountants, my, my high street accountant he's not a property expert, neither does he know legal, so, so he's a great guy, he does a job very well for me, but there's another world out there where he would say to me, yeah, go out, buy a property, uh, so you'll pay the stamp, you'll pay all the legals going, and you'll, you'll, you know, there's double waivers on tax, whereas talking to guys like, like uh, Rudy and David, that way we get to learn how to structure it, so it's almost like an assisted sale, to, to, to tour as well, the way tour was structured the deal was, it was a bit of a light bulb moment for me as well, so, okay, I didn't know you could do the deal like that, uh, and, and it worked through all both ways. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of meat will be taken out of the deal with taxes. Well, I don't want to put words in your mouth and tools here as well. But how, how do you think? Do you think there's different skill sets people have got? Yeah. 
Because one thing I, I, I really liked at the uh, Wandsworth Property Network was how humble one Martin was, how he was asking Tor questions on lease options and so forth. Because I don't think Martin's done lease options, and different people have got different skill sets. Yeah. Um, so when you're building that team, who, who do you, okay, so you, people like Tor to work with, solicitors as well, <laughs> who, who would be, so in, in the room itself, with the likes of architects, planners, surveyors, John Ray, Charles of Quantity Surveyor, who do you think would be most valuable for you to connect with on the day? I don't think there's anyone. It, it, it's connecting with a lot of people on the day. Mm. Unfortunately, there'll be a lot of people there uh, with many different disciplines. So, so, so bear with me. This is the first time I've ever done a multiple Facebook Live with more than two people. Uh, <laughs> it, it's fairly new to me, the technology of doing it for multiple people. But we were talking about connections, and we'll come back to you, Tony, in a few minutes. But I'm going to ask Luke to take the uh, hot seat. Because I, 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 thought, I thought the word connections was a really good time to bring you in. Uh, let me just get your partner right. Jahangir okay. Khan. Khan. Yeah. So you, you met Jahangir at uh, a property networking meet, and it's been really significant for your business. Is that right? Absolutely, I think, um, like Tony said, I think uh, when you go to a networking event, it's probably almost key to have a, an idea of what you want to benefit from going to an event, um, have a clear, defined strategy. But for me, uh, when I met Jahangir, it was literally just, it was actually on a course, not a networking event, but um, similar thing. It, um, but in a way, is it the similar thing? Because a course or a one day event is slightly different I would personally say to a networking event. And networking events are great because I, I run them. And if you go to networking events and you meet the same person more than two or three times, but in a way, you could argue that a course, particularly if it's a day course or two day course, is an accelerated way of networking because you're bumping into that person in the morning, you're bumping into them at lunchtime potentially. Potentially, at, you might have dinner with them. And if it's a two-day course, I don't know whether it's one day, two day, a week. It was actually a three-day. Oh, it was okay, the okay, three day. Pin Mastermind Accelerator. Um, but I, I think I think regardless of whether you meet someone on a networking event or on a course, it's the same thing. You meet someone. I literally met him for the first time. We resonated, and very different skill sets. His corporate background. I'm civil engineering background. Um, but no matter what your background, I think you come to realise that there's. You can't do property by yourself. It's quite a lonely journey if you are doing it by yourself. So um, you need to leverage other people around you, recognize probably what your strengths are, and then try and find people who can do other things. So um, for me, that's worked really well. Jahangir has a real sound knowledge of business. Uh, my strengths his, are more... His, his strength is systems, from what I understand. Systems, business in general, um, sales, marketing. He, to be honest, he has a lot of strengths um, and has taught me a lot. Um, and I'm due to meet up with him at some point soon. You will, no doubt. You should come along to the Clap and Pin first Tuesday of every month. Um, he's the host there. Um, but yeah, so my strengths are my engineering background, obviously mathematics, appraisals, finding deals. That's probably more my skill set. So you know, and then we're we're building a team around us with other. So who's sets. really good at building the team? Yourself more than Jahinga in terms of the soft skills. Um, soft skills as HR or HR and really just making sure people do what you want them to do. I think it, it's both of us to be honest. Um, I've spent the last two months training two of our new recruits, so we've taken on an acquisitions person and a project manager for our refurbs, who's a qualified architect. Um, so I've been responsible for those two, um, but Jeheng is more involved in terms of actually recruiting people. Um, so he has more skill sets around here, interviewing people and paperwork, legals. That's his real strength area. So whereas I'm probably more the hands-on, practical person who's who's out there finding opportunities, appraising deals, and and dealing with builders, contractors, like I used to in my career. So I've been. And you worked with quite people. quite major projects. One, not one Black Friday, so Black Friday's Rail Station. Bridge. Yep, yep. So that was a 550 million pound project. Uh, worked for Alpha B and Network Rail was our client. Um, so that was a big one. Worked on Crossrail, which I don't know the, the, if anyone else knows in the room. Was it, is it seven billion? I'm not sure of the actual value of Crossrail, but yeah, worked on 
worked on some large schemes, um, so yeah, great experience, but mm. realised that I wanted to get out of working in a rat race and, and work for myself and be flexible with my own time. So, so in, in terms of the property summit, you're, you're involved in sort of like structuring the networking, so mm. how, how to make sure people connect and of course there's an element of people connecting before they come into the room as well and being open as well. You have to be open to having additional partners in, in your business. When you went to that event, the uh, three day workshop, you didn't have a particular vision of looking for a particular person, but you were still open to the opportunities. Absolutely, I didn't go there. I was obviously there to learn about particular subjects, um, property. I uh, didn't go there looking for a business partner, it just naturally happened. We, you know, we didn't meet and say, let's go into business together. It was more a conversation. We resonated with one another, recognised we had different, um, yeah, different skill sets, and we lived in a similar location, so that was probably the, the attraction that we you know, liked one another. That always helps. Um, and, and then, yeah, did things quite informally initially, uh, and then did something a bit more formal later. Um, but yeah, I mean, at any networking event, it's probably, it's never going to happen straight away. As you said earlier, it's probably a, you'll meet someone a number of times before you realise that you maybe want to form a, some form of partnership. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely uh, a great and you're, you're, for it. One of your key activities is sourcing. From the presentation, I remember, because I, I looked at one of your particular tools, which well, you didn't design at all, um, but the tool you use on a regular, weekly, daily basis called Pipe. Drive, My drive, yep. Which, which I Very. definitely did, did look uh, at. Um, it's an interesting tool to say the least. Is, is that the most important tool in your business or what? Are the, it's hard to um, say the most important tool. If you were... <laughs> it probably used to be, but we're actually, we're actually dropping pipe drive for another tool um, because things like MailChimp to send out email letters and we've found another tool that's sort of all encompassing mm. that includes something similar to pipe drive. But do, do they have to come to the one day summit to find out what that is? <laughs> of course, yeah, I'll, um, I'll be sharing what that, that tool is. It's, uh, it's great value for money um, compared to some of the other tools on the market. It's a CRM, um, has yeah multifunctional tool. Um, but getting back to your question, that is one of the most powerful tools that we do use at the moment um, because it basically tracks all of our leads. It sets activities to remind us to call vendors, estate agents, so that we're constantly following up on all of our opportunities. And so the opportunities like, is our business, right? So, so it sounds important. like it gives you the opportunity to be consistent as well. Exactly. Um, I mean, human trade is going to forget, right? We need, we need reminders. So having a tool like that is essential. So we've, we've briefly looked at your relationship and sourcing as well. What's your skill set in sourcing? Where do you look to source? Is it a particular geographical area? Is it commercial to resi? Is it a particular type? Yeah, for us personally, we focus on one particular niche. So we, we look at ex-local conversions. Um, that's probably 80% of what we do. The other 20% is looking at things like short leases, large unmodernized houses, lands, but that's probably yeah, only 20%. So our, our strengths are in uh, building relationships with agents and some of the marketing that we're doing. Uh, we just sent, for example, we just sent out 1,500 letters in a particular area, but we're focused on Zone 2 and 3 of London. So and from those 1,500 so letters, we've, we've closed one opportunity. We had four calls. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty good ratio. Um, we did a Facebook marketing campaign last week, which generated five leads in five days. Um, which was a, a vendor focused thing. Um, nothing's come of that yet. We've got one lead that we're, we're following through with, but you know, that was two pounds per lead, whereas the, the letters are about 200 pounds per lead. So, but yeah, that's, that's probably what our strengths are in, in on market and off market sourcing. So, just, just to summarize, sourcing one of your strengths, if there's anyone ideally you'd like to meet at the One Day Summit, who would it be? What type of profession or um, what type of person? To be honest, we're probably gearing towards going into development at some point. So there's going to be a lot of people um, that I'm looking forward to meet. I can't really name one particular person. Um, I think there's, there's people in the room and there's other people that I'd love to chat more with. Um, I, I really can't. There's going to be so many different you know, 
amazing people there. So, I, yeah, there's not one person I can do. Look, Andrew raises a great point about VA, and you've got experience of VAs or PAs and, and so forth. And we will move on to, I don't want to give you all the air time. No, exactly. Let's uh, move on. But um, what's your recommendations to Andrew? In, and it seems to be more Andy's or Andrew's on this conversation than anyone else. So what, what's your recommendation about VAs? Uh, we personally use Upwork. Uh, Upwork for us has been brilliant <coughs> in terms of finding uh, outsourcers, whether that be a VA, uh, researchers, um, people writing blogs, people designing stuff. Uh, we, we personally use Upwork. It's, it's around the world. It's easy. You can pick and choose. It's a very easy tool to use. Uh, from what I understand, it's a sophisticated fiber. Exactly. More exactly. That's fire. probably a good summary. Yeah. Um, look, we, we can go on and on, and, and Luke at some point will be at one of my other meet presenting for a lot more detail. Um, I don't know when, partly it's when Luke's agenda, uh, you know, his diary and so forth, will allow you to present at some of my other meets. I'm just going to invite Tor. Tor, you want to yes, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Hi Brandon. Hi. 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 And Stephen, thanks for joining us. Stephen, I'm really pleased to see you there. From what I remember, you were on The Apprentice. Is that right, Stephen? If you just want to add that comment, um, from from what I remember. Tor, huge thanks for joining us. Your, your name comes up so so much. Developed with us. Uh, you're the co-founder. You're on the structure and deals. What what does it mean to you about uh, structure and deals? What why are you not just an ordinary structural deal person, but an extraordinary. And you may not say that, but you know, you, you, seem, you seem to right? be the one name in the UK way. people come to. So, it, how is it? Is it because you're creative? Yeah, you mentioned skill sets, Brennan, when you were talking before, and I think people like yourself, you've become extremely skilled at developing, um, you know, relationships with loads of people and running networking events and it's something you're passionate about. So I'm passionate about negotiations, doing deals, finding solutions where you know the solution might not be that obvious. So and I've spent many, many hours on it. They say it takes about ten thousand hours to become a master of something. Sure. So yeah, if you spend lots of hours, you know, you get luckier. Mm. How much of it is your is your peer group and your team? So Rob, I think there's two Robs. Yeah. Wilkinson and I will never get his surname right. You you have a Robbie P. And yeah, Robbie Rob P. Is a lot easier. Yeah, that's easy um, to remember. Is there other people? Because there's Sachin as well. Sachin. Yeah. So it, basically, your your um you know your your team is everything. With, without a team, and also in the our world, your network. So all of our deals and our fundraising comes through, you know, our team and our network. So, so, yeah, so the key, key question is, how do you create that effective team to become an extraordinary at creating instruction deals? So what, what would your suggestions be? Because people join these videos, Facebook Live, and they've got questions. Um, you know, feel free to put, put your questions into the Facebook Live, but the key thing people would think is is how to. So you know how to structure deals, how to create that team. Did you find Rob W and Rob P by pure accident? Did you have a vision? What was the vision important to become the how to to answer that? Yeah, uh, like anyone, we all have goals, and it's important to write them down. I use vision boards as a tool. So, you know, they talk about law of attraction all that. I don't think there's anything mystical about it. If you're just looking at something constantly, it reminds you and it makes you, you know, work towards that goal. So I put a, uh, you know, a goal out there to find someone who is good at technology and internet marketing. And I met Robbie P at Rob W's wedding. So that, that's, <laughs> and I met uh, Rob W at an NLP workshop. You know, we spent two weeks together with quite a few other people actually I know from the property world. Um, but you mentioned something about, um, you know, how do you uh, get better at something? I think one of the, I mean, we're obviously at a certain level and we're always like everyone, we're looking to move to the next level. So I think one of the key things is not being afraid to share, you know, your knowledge and 
um, solutions, you know, different ways of doing things. Some people may think that it, it sets you back if you're giving away, you know, information. But you know, I, I think it can only push you ahead because if you're at a certain level, you're, you're seen as a thought leader, seen as someone who's not in the mould but above the mould. In no, way. no, I, I I'm, like, I'm always looking at people who are operating at the level above me. Sure. So I don't consider myself to be, you know, uh, uh, above anyone else. I want to get to the next levels and keep progressing like okay. that. Okay. So goal setting we mentioned being key. Yeah. Again, it's the, the how to, and, and you know, the, there's ideas about writing and audio playing, and you know, it goes back to the books like Thinking Grow Rich. It goes back to Jim Rohn and many people, you know, th these guys are no longer alive. Napoleon Hill, Jim Rohn, uh, but you know, people talk about goal setting to the you know twenty first century. Look, goal setting is great, but how do you measure as well? What key metrics? Uh, the results. It's the number one thing. Okay. Yeah. But, but what 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 <laughs> are you looking for in terms of results? Because for one developer. A margin of 10, 15, 20% is great. Another, I don't want to quote develop different developers what they're looking for because it could change. Mm. You know, and maybe there's a deal which they're thinking, look, margins are not as good as we're looking at, but there might be something else. So how, how do you measure? I know you're saying results. What, what results are you looking for? So the, the key results that we're looking for is the cash on cash return. So if you stick a hundred thousand pounds or a million pounds into a deal, how much you're going to get back out and, and when you're going to get back out. That's the key metric that we look at when we're analyzing a deal. So you're, you're looking at time about how long you get the money to come back to you and you're also looking at the return. Yes. And Which one is more important or is hard to say? That they go hand in hand with each other. Yeah. And the other key thing is about risk. So especially in the market that we're in now, the market is turning a bit. Oh, so, sorry. So, yeah. Because um, we've got... No, no, we're not running out of time. It's, I'm just trying to read these notes. Um, I, I'm curious how you would approach an STPP deal to ensure that there is enough margin to trade it on if needed? Yeah, subject to planning deal. So I can answer that very quickly for you because I'm sure you know you want to hear what sure. you guys have got to say as well. So you, you need to factor in the risk. So we're looking at a site in East London. It's going to cost about 150 grand to get planning for 50 units. So you need to work in a margin for your planning gain and then there needs to be the standard developer's margin for the development gain. You know, and the standard development gain is about 20% return on cost, depends whether you're looking at the cost or the GDB, and that it's down to you to figure out, you know, if you stick 100 grand into a deal to get planning, if you lose it, well, you've lost 100 grand, but if it goes through and you do 10 other deals like that, well, what's the return on cash that you want to make? And so it's definitely well over 100%, by the way, for your planning costs. Sure. Look, we, we are going to do a short synopsis with Ronald Fletcher Baker, David and Rudy. Um, so we will join you again in a few minutes because we, we, we will do an Instagram live, but that's going to be really short, Thanks you know, 60, 60, 60 seconds each. But can, Thanks, can I just, thank you. Thanks, Alex. And, and feel free to post those yeah. questions. So Alex, Andrew, um, you know, if you want to post more questions, because I, I will do an Instagram live, but that, to be fair, Instagram is not my key focus for this morning. It's more on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live. I have to admit, I didn't know there was an Instagram Live, to be fair, until uh, I went to Nicole Bremner's, uh, you know, social media summit, uh, discovered um, Instagram wasn't just about pictures, was also had the option um, to optimize videos. Well, look, Rudy and David, um, I'm going to discover things about you all the time with your keen cyclist, so uh, <laughs> maybe you'll be cycling to Mipham next year. <laughs> uh, I know um, Orla Shields, I don't know if she's on our conversation at some point, but uh, from Get Renter, she cycled all the way from London to uh, uh, southern France, Carpens, or however you like to pronounce it. Uh, David, we always get to see Rudy on video, but not, yeah. not, not you. So um, usually behind the camera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do. I work closely uh, together with Rudy. We're both uh, partners in the property litigation department of Ronald Fletcher Baker, and 
It's funny just listening to, to all the things that have been said by everybody today. It's a lot of the same themes that we have in our own team that we're trying to build. You know, Paul was mentioning about always wanting to learn and always wanting to go to the next level. Um, and you know, our approach is very much you know, aligned with that there. We're always encouraging our, our entire team to, to reach that next level. Because Martin Skinner, when you were on the panel at the Wandsworth seven year, I can't remember your answer, so you, <laughs> you probably remember it better than I do. Uh, but Martin Skinner came along, Stuart was on the panel that particular evening. Martin asked a question about team building. Yeah. And you, you, you talked about your experience at previous solicitors. Why has it worked this time around? You know, how have you created uh, David and Mafus and I don't know all the other names to be fair. There's, there's about 60 in your yeah. company, is that right? Yeah, 10 partners. I mean, this, um, in terms of, I, I don't want to take all the credit for creating the team because it's, it's, it certainly wasn't just me. We have, you know, we have some great people at the firm. We have, you know, decades of experience when we're talking about building teams and having expert knowledge. Um, certainly our firm it has that. And you have people like, Jonathan Roberts, who has 30 years in, in, um, in property and structuring deals. You have also Simon Lawrence, who acts for you know, the big corporate investors, people who are you know, a lot of offshore investors as well. So he has that kind of expertise. You have you know, Mufus as well, who's joined us, who's bringing his you know, expertise of structuring deals as well. In terms of the team, you know, I think we all share this, this core value of really going um, you know, investing in clients, no matter you know what the value of the deal is, and to use our expertise in a way that you know perhaps you don't get if you go to a you know a, a different law firm. So it's you know you, you don't come to us and say well necessarily okay this is the deal and just run it through conveyancing transaction. You know there's lots of options out there, and our expertise in particular the people that I mentioned who have decades of experience in, in structuring deals, they they will look at the look at the transaction and together with your other team, you know, your, your planners, your tax guys, um, look at how best to structure that deal for you. And a bit like what Luke was saying as well, having people in the team with different skill sets so we can specialise and have real expertise in really novel fields. Just just to go on the theme of <coughs> Oh, we're almost running out of time. Uh, this has gone so quickly. It's, 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 we started just after 9.30. Uh, and um, I, I will try to put a, a short Instagram as well. Literally a 10 minute maximum Instagram uh, live video. Look, at the theme of the event is how to become an extraordinary developer. And you work with a wide range of developers. What do you see the difference between someone who's new, someone who's well established, is it just they understand the market better? Is it that they work with you better? Can developers work with solicitors? What can a developer, how can a developer work with a solicitor to get the most out of that solicitor rather than put on LinkedIn, this guy's taking ages? Which you sometimes see, not, not for your firm, but... Yeah. Hopefully not. Um, so I think the, the difference between your average and your extraordinary um, developer is is a knowledge of their of their market, and in particular, if they're into development, a knowledge of planning, and a knowledge of how that deal can actually work, and how they can they can structure that. <coughs> and as, if you get more sophisticated, the more sophisticated developers go out there and they look for distressed assets. They look for you know something that's got a bit of kind of litigation associated with it, or uh, a mess so restrictive so covenant, or a or a listed building type problem. And it's more about kind of the appetite for risk, but the, the kind of considered, considered knowledgeable um, kind of decision in taking that, that risk on board. And then they, they come to us knowing that we have the skill set that can help them, they have their, their planners, or we have networks um, to planners as well, that can, that can help them move that forward. That's fascinating, you talk about listed being one of the key facets. I had a call from one of my members who was asking about listed buildings wanted a key supplier. Um, so you do focus or do work with people on listed as well? Yeah, no, certainly when you're dealing with um, listed buildings, it is a kind of multidisciplinary kind of team that you do need on, on board. You'll need 
planning council, you'll you, you need your architectural planners and you'll need your legals as well in order. So it's really all about, I mean, and this is what the summit is about, is about putting people together that have that skill set to say, well, okay, here, here are these, here, you know, here are these guys and, you know, we can actually help you out in terms of giving our take on what you need. Yeah, because one of the key things a lot of our really successful clients do is leverage lots of <coughs> people's skills and times and you know events like yours are going to be you know give people a, a really good opportunity to tap into lots of different um, skill sets so we've, we've looked back from an extraordinary developer what just to summarize some of the key names we've got the likes of nicole Bremner from east eight and don't quote me on how much she's raised in the last 12 months it's, it's probably hard enough to heard from it for some time so let alone from me uh, but significant millions, in, 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 and I think a record was one million and four point five hours uh, from East Day. And I remember when Nicole spoke for the first time at my event. So a huge thanks to Nicole. You've got uh, Granite Architects as well. The noted architectural practice, medium size, uh, based uh, in Wandsworth, been around for about twenty eight years. You've got the lights of Richard Bowser. So. There's little from me on the day in terms of my own input. It's Richard Bowser who will be chairing the uh, how do you scale your, your deals and or scale your panel, I should say, and how do you scale your, um, your uh, how do you structure your deals will be chaired by Puragesh Sivanasan from Totem Finance. Look, I've mentioned the name Richard Bowser, Puragesh Sivanasan. You've got architects, planners, surveyors, John Ray, uh, being a surveyor. You've got the amazing Luke Skelton, who's coming from an engineering background, who's moved into sourcing, who's moved into more than sourcing as well. Uh, you've got Tony Egan, who's a very humble uh, landlord. You've got the team from Develop With Us. It's not, and it's not just the team from Develop With Us, which will be there. It's the teams from Ronald Fletcher Baker. You've got the teams from East Eight as well. Look, and I'm sure I've missed out. Have I missed out any names, Tony? Nicholas will be there. Nicholas. Marshall as well, so uh, no, no, don't develop with us. Um, look, we're going to leave it as that for the moment. I just want to say huge thanks to your interaction this morning. I want to say huge thanks to my um, panelists, stroke speakers for the upcoming summit. I want to say huge thanks to Tony because Tony gets quite a few calls about the event. How would you do this? And just, just some feedback. Look, we're going to go onto my Instagram live. It is going to be very short, snappy. It's going to be a little bit different, um, partly because I know you guys have got a tight agenda. I've, I've, I've got a really tight agenda, and everyone has. So it's going to be quite snappy, short Instagram live. So huge thanks for joining myself. Huge thanks for uh, the panelists, speakers. Look, if you're interested in anything more about the one day event, um, the easiest way is to literally go on Eventbrite and let me just see if I can come up. Uh, property, let me just see if I've got the link. Tony, can I just ask you to add that link in? So if I, I know you're on Facebook Live. Uh, let me just see. Uh, let me just give you the domain. So if, if you can type in to domain, uh, let me just come up for a bit. It's probably on Facebook and everywhere to be fair. Property Summit 2017.eventbrite.com. So, um, literally, uh, we're going to come to an end here. Uh, huge thanks for joining me. Look, I, I like this interaction. It's been interesting. It, 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 you know, maybe using slightly different technology, we could get the room a bit more involved as well. Um, it's new to me to doing a multiple. I, I don't think people do multiple Facebook Lives usually as well. So huge thanks for joining me. Um, Tony, have you added that link? I'm just looking for it now. Okay. Well, you, Tony, you'll be able to do that even when we go off offline. So thank you.